All right, guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel, The Hunting Collective. Today, we've got Clay in the chair. How you doing, man? I'm good, bro. You good? good yeah. yeah, I'm good, man, I'm good. So what do you want to do today? What's the plan? So I'm feeling like uh, skin fade, short back, uh, back and sides. Yeah. Um, maybe we just like tidy up the top a little bit. Um, yeah. If we just like fade the beard. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Into the salsa. Into the side, yeah. Do you want to? Can I have a quick look at the beard if you don't mind? Yeah, you know, sure, absolutely. There you sure. Go. Oh, sweet man. Do you want to take much off or do you want to keep it quite full? I think we can take it down a little bit. All right, time, yeah. So, like a short length, fade it down from the beard, yeah, exactly. shape it up as well, contour yeah, around the cheeks. For sure. Yeah, sweet. All right, yeah, Sounds Sam. Good. You know what you want, man. You know yeah. what you want. Sweet. So, as Clay said, um, skin fade on the back and sides. He wants to kind of, you want to keep most of the top, but just yeah. kind of tidy it up. Okay, so, so as you can see, it's still quite short here, but I still want to keep that kind of shape where it's got that looseness to it and the curls, because as you can see, he's got wicked hair. So, you know, don't want to kind of take it too square. I want to still keep that kind of slightly, you know, that disconnection going through, because it looks really cool for this style, but obviously he's got a few little stragglers through the back that we can kind of tidy up a little bit as well. So I think we, we'll start with the fade first. I'm going to section the top away though. So I'm going to use some hair grips to section it away and then we'll work on the top after we've done the fade as well, but then we'll fade it into the beard. So it'll be quite nice to see where we leave it to on the beard as well. And we'll shape up the hairline, shape up the sides as well. And um, yeah, just get you looking a bit a bit fresh yeah, for an upcoming trip, mate. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, man. All right, cool. Sweet. Perfect. So just sectioned off Clay's hair. Now, I'm just using my brush just to comb it down. Now, when you're working, say, through curly hair or any Afro type hair, you've got to work in two different ways. So you, you can't just always work up because you remove too much length. You've also got to work with the grain. So what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to start on the zero blend first. On my big clippers, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it just below because I want to really edge out this hair. And what I want to create is that really sharp edging and detailing. Get a really sharp temple through here, through the curve, into nothing, and then let it kind of form again just as it gets into the beard. So you see that real sharp fade. I'm going to drop it down at the temple here. Like such, and then raise it slightly up over the ear. All right, so we're creating that slight arch. What that allows me to do is keep the darkness around the temple. So you get a real sharp edging, which mainly makes the fade pop. It really does. I'm just working nice and low. I'm just going to do two sides first, and then we'll work on the back. Now, I'm not going to edge out first yet. I'm just going to put the details in, and this is going to start taking it shorter and shorter. Go. My shavers now. Again, just working very low up into where the trimmers ended. Placing a half or a 0.5 line, just a little bit higher up. So that's my half there, and I'm going to work through the lever slowly, getting down to my zero. I'm blending in that 0.5 or the half, if you want to call it, down into my zero. Working slowly through the lever. So I get down to my zero. I'm not going up into that line, just scooping the clipper off, not to create any more harsh lines. There we go. When you go against the grain, you remove an awful lot of length, right? But I want to still create some shape in this as well. So I'm going to work with the grain, and that will leave it like as almost like I'm going with a three or a four. So it won't take it and be as drastic. But what it'll help to do, it'll help to smooth off that blending point as well. Just working down, using the gripper as my guide, being able to slightly rest it against the gripper so that I don't go into the top. Just combing this through just to smooth out the blend. I'm just using the brush as well, just to help smooth out the curls too. A comb is good, but a brush is, it gives a bit more of a smoother finish to curls. That's essentially why you use them on a beard, because the beard hair is generally curly. It's the same sort of principle when you're doing it in, a, in any sort of afro hair as well. Now I'll work up and off with the two again now, not going too high. You see how much more length it takes off on there than it did when we were working with the green with the growth direction. So arching the clipper around to maintain length towards the temple, so we make that fade pop. Moving on to my one half guard now as well. So where we start with the two and work down from the point of where the hair gripper is, we're gonna work a little bit lower down now. So leave it down, working with the growth direction, and just taking off the ends and then curls, just to smooth off the ends. Be 
receiver down and waking up and off. Onto my one guard now. Leave it open so it becomes a one and a half. So working that one and a half up into where the one and a half guard started going down. So I see that line starts to gradually disappear. I'm just working up and off. Corner of the clipper now, just to start to refine through the darker areas, just to really get that really nice smooth transition. And I'm working slightly into the temple as well, because it's still on the one and a half. So it's still gonna have that darkness to it as well. Through the lever, in between a one and a one and a half. And we're essentially just trying to use the corner of the clipper. And around, lever down, teeth facing. I don't want to go down with the one and a half. I just want to start to cap off and refine. So the teeth are facing the clay's head. I'm just working down just to refine. Close guard now. I'm working down. Just refine. Half guard now. Open. Same thing again. The arch. Working in. Not going into the temple too much. Just working up and off into where my one guard finished. Closed again. And arching that round as well. There we go. And I'm taking that off now. I'm just going to start to refine with the open blade now. And what I'm going to do work the blade open so work slightly over them curls one and a half guard just to go over any darker patches a really smooth transition from hair into scalp so i'm just combing down the sides and i'll start working into the temple now so i'm just going to follow and just enhance uh, clay's temple area here Work that right down into the skin. And just work over the line. And one of the reasons why I like to leave a little bit of length in the, in the temple and do that little arch is because a lot of the time when you're shaping up hairlines, enhancements are used to get that real sharpness of the hairline. Now, nothing wrong with them. I mean, it, it doesn't half make the hairline look unbelievably crisp, but by leaving that extra bit of length and arching the, the, the fade, um, when you start to really edge out the hairline, you don't need enhancements. So when Clay goes home tonight and has a shower, the enhancements will wash off, whereas that won't wash off. That'll be there for three, four days maybe. So you're not having to, you know, you've got that exact look when he leaves my shop today as what you'll have in the next few days as well. I'm just gonna finalize this now. Repeat on this side now, again. Dropping down, our, starting with our zero, dropping down the temple, and working around. We just want to try and start to match up to where our zero is here. Bring them up and off to give a nice seamless transition into the mini clippers. Now this will make it even both sides, but won't make it absolutely perfectly straight. Just keep that nice, natural sort of loose disconnection going on. More than it, like I said at the start, being perfectly pinned straight all the way around. I just think it adds a little bit of something else to this haircut. But what we're doing now is we're still building up weight here to still create a square shape either side. So even though he has got that disconnection, the loose look like really nice curls flowing loosely on top, he's still got that square element to the hair because he's still starting to lean up his face as well. Moving it up and off. Remember just to not go right up and bring it out towards me like this. So building up that weight through the round of the head there. So I started working down with the one and a half. The lever open, and now I'm working up into that hair as well. And I'm working through the lever, so that one 
in the, between the one and the one and a half on the lever. And I'm just working that down like so. Just to cap off any of them hairs through that one and a half area to be really smooth off the blend. So I'm working through the lever again. Now, I'm going to finish off doing the back now. Now, it's slightly darker through there, so just working with the one and a half guard and the lever open, just a little bit longer than I need to, but I don't want to go in with something too short that I can't rectify it then. So I always go on the longer side and then I just lower through the lever if I need to. Pull the hair grips out and just work fingers into the hair as well, just to see how it matches it. But can you see, just by leaving that weight through the corners now, we've created a much squarer finish to say. So it isn't just like there's like no hair and then loads of hair falling on top. We start to create a bit of a fade in there, another different element to this haircut. So what I'm going to do, just a bit of freehand scissor, just as it naturally sits, just to take off any of them little flyaway uh, sections that can make it look a bit kind of untidy. I'm just working along, just, just snipping off any little ones that don't sit right. Looking through that front as well. Finish off with just shaping the front hairline. Just comb out them little hairs through the front. I'm going to start from one side and meet this corner here. Then this is all about just strengthening the hairline. Don't cut too far into the hairline. It's all about strengthening it up. And just with a bit of freehand scissor around the hairline, just ever so slightly. So, just give that a little bit of strength. We're working to our beard now. I'm thinking with your beard today, what I reckon would be quite nice is keeping the line just below the jawline, so it's really sharp, to really angle the facing, because again, we've got this lovely blend coming from just underneath the round of the head. You've got the curls disconnected on top into that fade. So I think if we work it down and get it build up a little bit more length through here, be really nice but we'll shape it nice in there but i think we can contour it really sharp around the cheeks and especially coming through here but not taking that line too high just so it doesn't sit on the, the jawline itself because from a different angle it doesn't always work you yeah. see just underneath the jawline all right so uh, would you happy with like say a two on the the, the beard here and then just fading the rest yeah, out yeah that sounds good. sweet man thank you so we're still keeping it nice and dark around this area here And the reason I've gone for a two is because Clay's off traveling and he's got a job in the lovely Guatemala, as you told me before. And uh, I don't think a long beard is going to work. And because we are fading it down from skin, this will automatically look a lot darker. I'm just working it up until that point there, like so. And then getting the one and a half. You can see his beard grows from the center out towards the ear. So I'm going with that to start, to add that graduation. So we're doing kind of like a reverse, a reverse fade here in a sense. We're starting to fade from the chin out towards the hair. Against the grain on the jawline, because I think that you just taper that jawline a tiny bit, it just adds that little extra sharpness when you come to detail. That's my one. Just working out a bit more. Down to my one now. Into my half. And up into my zero. 
onto our mini clippers now. I'm going to work over that line. Blend it nice and seamlessly into the beard. I'm going to work and try and just strengthen up the edge of his beard. So he's got a really amazing straight line naturally <laughs> coming through here. So I'm going to use that as a guide. And then working down from this arch. So let's just imagine we're drawing a pen and working down. We want it to come round and down. Okay. This comes round and down. And then we want this to sit into here. Like so. I'm going to put the line down the bottom now as well. So just underneath the jawline. So a good way of doing this. Feel what your finger with the jawline is. Push on it. And go under. That's where you want the line to be. If you want to sit around the face and really map the face, it's just underneath the jawline. Into the middle. Like so. Now, just underneath the jawline, I'm going to work on my number one. I'm going to run it along the line just to taper it ever so slightly. So, all it does is just sharpens off the line, like so. Working on clipper over comb now, just to trim down the moustache. Just working over to the nets. Just going to sharpen this off across the top of the lip. There we go. Now, do exactly the same on the other side. You know, he's a cool guy, isn't he? So let's try and make something work for him in terms of his facial hair and his haircut as well. Blend in with his lifestyle and what he does for a living too. Looking towards beard now. Strengthen that up. And if you follow the jawline, we should naturally meet in the middle. We're just underneath the jawline where it wants to sit and map the face and naturally meet up to the other side. Now, as I like to do when I'm doing the moustache, I like to follow the curve of the lips. I think it just creates a really nice shape, very natural looking shape. Just a little bit of freehand scissor, just raised slightly off the skin, just rubbing it clear across the length of the beard, just to cap off any of them little unruly hairs. Just on the line. Here we go, man. Have a look at that for me. Sick. Is that right? Yeah, sick. Nice, man. It's good length, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Sweet, man. Thank you very much. No, thank you. You're welcome. Wow, I'm getting so tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's very relaxing, isn't it, man? Yeah, it's very yeah. relaxing. Just to recap, we, um, what, Clay wants to keep, kind of keep the top as it was, just a slight tidy up, um, but obviously get a skin fade on the back and side. And then work down into the beard. So we did two around the mouth, around the sort of goatee area, and then fade it out through the guards, up into skin, and then edged it all out, um, just to kind of finish it all off. And that was kind of Sick. short and sweet, but very, uh, very effective. Awesome, yeah? Happy? Uh, uh, sweet, man. Thank you very much, man. Uh,